How People Learn to Fly by Fran Hodgkins, illustrated by True Kelly. Ah, the spirit of St. Louis. <coughs> Let's read and find out. Science, stage two. For Tessie, for Charlotte, and Louise Lindblom. Looks like I have to back it up. There we go. Moving in. All right. Honk, honk. Honk, honk. honk. When you see a bird flying, do you dream about flying too? I do. Says Crispy. Do you run with your arms out, imagining that you're soaring among the clouds? Do you make paper airplanes? Do you fly kites? If you do, you are not alone. For thousands of years, people have dreamed of being able to fly. Look at that bird. Oh my gosh, what is that? Ooh, a dragon. <gasps> the dog's holding. The string. He's helping out. They watched birds and bats soar. They imagined people and other animals that could fly and told stories about them. Icarus and Pegasus. This is back in the Greek times, gods and goddesses. Huh. They designed machines that they thought would be able to fly. They had many ideas as they tried each new idea. They learned a lot. Wow, look at these inventions that people were attempting to fly. Can you imagine? It's probably like this picture shows a lot of people falling into the ground, hopefully not too high. They learned about gravity. Gravity is the force that keeps everything on Earth's surface. Because of gravity, things have weight. If there were no gravity, people, dogs, cats, and everything else would go floating off into space. Gravity keeps us on the ground, even if we would rather be flying. <laughs> right? You wouldn't want any flying snakes or garbage flying all over the place. And it would be really hard to sit at school, right, and study if you weren't able to sit down. Yes, you don't want anybody floating off into space as much as we want to, like the book says. People also learned about air. Air is made of tiny particles called molecules. When you walk or run, you push through air molecules. They push back on you, too, even though you don't usually feel the push unless the wind blows. See the kite? The kite tail and string keep the kite at the right angle to the wind. The wind moves over the kite and lifts it up. People learned that wind could push a kite into the sky. When air molecules push back on a moving object. That is called a force called drag. You can feel drag for yourself. Hold out your arms. Now spin around. Feel the push of air on your arms and hands. That's drag. Like gravity, drag works against objects that are trying to fly. <laughs> Kites were useful and fun, but people wanted more. They wanted to fly like birds. Birds had something that kites didn't. Birds had wings.
Now we get you, Mr. Page, to turn. Here we go. There we go. Huh. People made wings and strapped them to their arms. They flapped their arms but couldn't fly. In England, Monk Elmer broke his legs in A.D. 1010 after a 15-second flight. <laughs> oh, what an experience to witness and be part of. They built gliders, light aircraft with wings. Some didn't work, but some did. Ooh, wow. To be the first. Wing shapes, bird, dragonfly, glider, airplane. The gliders that worked best had special wings. His wings were arched on both the top and bottom. In the bottom, the air pulled the wings from above and pushed the wings from below. When the wings went up, so did the glider. Arched wings helped create a force called lift. Lift is the force that keeps birds and gliders in the air. So you have lift, flight direction, airflow, and the wing. Airflow. Hmm. Ooh. Most gliders have long, thin wings. The wings create enough lift to carry the aircraft and its passengers. Gliders usually ride currents of the of air the same way a hawk soars. Oh my goodness, that was my best. Let me try again. Huh. <laughs> that is not a hawk. <laughs> Gliders are very light, and long wings and air currents give them enough lift to fly. But to carry more than just a passenger or two, an aircraft needs a lot more lift. The question is, how do you create more lift? An engine is the answer. So you have the thrust, the propeller. Engine turns propeller. It tucks back into plane for gliding. Bicycle chains to propellers. Radiator line. The Wrights Brothers aircraft engine. An engine is a machine that changes, changes energy into movement. The forward movement, movement that an airplane needs to fly is called thrust. More thrust makes an airplane move forward faster. Moving faster creates more lift. And with more lift, an airplane can carry more weight. So an aircraft with an engine can carry passengers or cargo. There's the fuel line. Wow. How cool. <gasps> Whoa. In 1903, the Wright brothers figured out how to get wings and an engine to work together in order to give an airplane enough thrust to fly. They made the first powered flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Wow, can you imagine being the first person to successfully fly supersonic flight fighter jet and the Voyager? Since then, people have made airplanes that can fly faster than sound can travel. They have made airplanes that can fly all the way around the world without stopping. Unbelievable. Wow. Just to think, in that short period of time, today, thousands and thousands of people travel in airplanes every day. People really have learned how to fly. Look at that. Hmm. Just leaving Costa Rica or the Bahamas or somewhere. Wow. Hundreds and thousands of people. Oh, wow. Look at this. What do we got here? Find out more about flying. Find facts. 
Orville and Wilbur Wright were the first two men to fly, build and fly an airplane successfully. In 1903, their Wright Flyer rose into the air at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Charles Lindbergh was the first person to fly solo, nonstop across the Atlantic Ocean. In 1927, he flew from New York to Paris. His plane was called the Spirit of St. Louis. That's right, we saw that plane in the beginning of the book. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. In 1928, she was one of the three person crew that made the flight. She became the first woman to fly alone across the Atlantic in 1932. Wow. Not even a hundred years ago. The world record for the longest hand-launched paper airplane flight is held by Ken Blackburn. In 1998, his, air, his paper airplane flew for 27 Point six seconds in the Georgia Dome. It's time for you to try your hand at aviation design by testing a paper airplane inside your house and outside. You can answer questions about flight. You will face the same issues that Wright Brothers faced at Kitty Hawk. Ask one of your friends to help you with this experiment. Here it is. Ex materials needed several sheets of 8.5 by 11 inch paper, stopwatch, pencil, and notebook. Follow the diagram below to build your paper airplane. Here it is. Got your plane made? Good. Then find a long hallway or a big open room in your house. Throw the airplane overhand. As soon as it leaves your hand, have your friend start the stopwatch. Stop the timer once the plane falls to the ground. How long does your plane, paper airplane stay in the air? Repeat this experiment several times and write down the times in your notebook. Switch with your friend and let him or her throw the plane while you time its flight. When you switched jobs, were the times different? Next, try this experiment outside. Is there any wind blowing? Throw the plane into the breeze when the wind is hitting your face. And then try throwing the plane with the breeze when the wind is hitting your back. How did the wind affect the plane's flight? Once you've finished with your indoor and outdoor experiments, think about how these issues are related to flying a real airplane. Did your plane fly better inside or outside? What things would you have fixed? What, or sorry, what things would you have to fix about your paper airplane to make it fly better? Ah, oh, these are great, great things to to try and do, especially with a friend. Oh, there we go. Oh, Fran Hodgkins is the author of The Orphan Seal, the winner of the Henry Berg Children's Book Award presented by the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. This is Fran Hodgkins. First, let's read and find out science book. She lives in Maryland. True Kelly is the illustrator of many books in the Let's Read and Find Out Science series. She lives in Warner, New Hampshire. You can visit her online at www.truekelly.com. For exclusive information on your favorite authors and artists, visit www.authortracker.com. All right, everybody, that concludes Let's Read and Find Out About Flying. These other books, what is this one? Energy makes things happen. Gravity is a mystery and forces make things move. Cool. All right, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Keep reading. Keep going on adventures.